What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. In this video, I will give you my top 10 things on what you can do while locked up with this virus invasion, which is forcing us to stay home, forcing us to stay safe, even though we should stay safe anyway. If you're like me and if you listen to the government and you stay inside and you wash your hands and you just being kind of locked up in your own cave just to kind of stop and prevent this from spreading, you kind of want some ideas and you kind of want some inspiration of how you can fulfill your time being in jail, if you can call it that. And uh, that's why I'm here now to give you the top 10 things of what you can do, which is also keeping me busy during this pandemic. So let's start with the first thing that can keep you really, really busy and help you along the way once we kind of are able to travel and, and get out there and the airplanes is actually flying and, and so on. And that is Epidemic Sound. The reason why I mention Epidemic Sound, and most of you know that I am an ambassador for Epidemic Sound as well. And this is not to drive more traffic towards them, but here's the thing, Epidemic Sound, you can get that for 30 days of free trial. And that means if you're locked up for 30 more days you can get this free account on epidemic sound you can browse through the music the sound effects everything that they offer and by doing that you can easily find the type of music you can gather music for your travel videos so once you're out traveling you don't have to go through everything you don't have to browse for the music because you already have the type of music that you want for your travel videos and this is a really simple way of staying ahead of time as i mentioned before in my how to grow on, on youtube as well if you want to check out that video it's down in the description below but this is basically something that will help you once this is over because you have all the sound effects you can gather all and assemble all the sound effects that you want to use that means footsteps uh, seagulls water waves waterfall forest whatever you name it you can just put them in your history or a save folder or just save them on epidemic sound in your own folder and then if you decide to buy epidemic sound then you have everything and once you buy an epidemic sound at a later day uh, the sound effects and everything will be in your folder on epidemic sound because it's your user you still have to sign up but you're not getting charged for those 30 days and i must say i'm browsing that site quite often now because i really want that music uh, when i can get out there over to the states fly the plane and uh, do the traveling I want to do. So with that said, let's move over to number two. Number two is really fast, simple, and it's the best possible thing that we can do now since we have more focus on LumaFusion, since we work more with LumaFusion, since we want to keep ourselves busy. And that is to report every single bug that you find immediately to LumaTouch. And by doing that, you can also help LumaTouch in correcting the app fix what's broken. So that is a really simple but yet effective way of uh, helping the devs out as well during this uh, time as we probably spend more time on LumaFusion. And again, by helping LumaTouch doing this now, we will have less struggle if there is any bugs once we're out there traveling, filming the cinematic videos as well, because then the problems might be fixed already. Now let's move over to number three. So number three is probably the most effective way of editing videos in LumaFusion right now, since we can't get out there and film what we want to film and we can't travel. And that is to get one month of Storyblocks for LumaFusion. However, I'm not sponsored to say anything about Storyblocks, but I will get Storyblocks myself because I kind of need the footage for the tutorials and I also want to uh, have something else so I don't keep using the same footage over and 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 over again for my tutorials. Now let's move over to number four. Number four is Instagram and LumaFusion. You've probably seen on my Instagram as well that I kind of stepped up the game when it comes to editing those videos for LumaFusion. 
for Instagram. I mean, <laughs> the simple tip and the trick here to keep you busy is to take your photos, make a stunning, awesome slideshow in LumaFusion for then to upload to your Instagram account or to make some before and after, even though it's before and after color graded even with the cinematic bars and so on. Just make that in LumaFusion and upload to Instagram. And it doesn't matter if you uploaded the video or the photo before because this is something completely new. Try to take it over to Lightroom Mobile, do some adjustments as well, color grade and uh, make some, try making some LUTs for it in uh, LumaFusion as well. And then you can do a before and after for Instagram as well. And you can also go back and just do the simple pause, go, go through your videos. And if you find a frame within your video, which is really, really good, you can take that frame and you can take a snapshot and then you have a photo for Instagram as well. It's not the best quality, but at least you have something to keep you busy. Now moving over to the fifth thing to keep you busy. And that is also related to Storyblocks as well as uh, Google and LumaFusion. You can take videos or photos uh, from Storyblocks or Google and then you can take that over to LumaFusion and you can work on your color grading. You can find the photos or videos from places you usually travel to or places that you are going to travel to in the future. You can try to get raw format as well or you can try to get footage or photos which is not color graded, take them into LumaFusion and then you can work on your color grading for your next trip. And then you can easily save those presets, let's say you are going to London and then you just make the presets that you want to make and you can save them as the London preset one or London grade one or whatever just to keep it organized so when you go there and you film that you know that you already have some color presets for those videos and photo. And when you do this, you can easily apply the color grading to your footage and then you can tweak the sliders inside LumaFusion yourself. Now let's move over to number six. And number six is something that I think is really, really funny. And this has been something that I've been trying to do myself and I had a blast doing it. And that is voiceover in LumaFusion. And the way that the voiceover system works for those which is not used to it, is that you record your voice inside LumaFusion because it has an audio record button as well. And you have the video playing on the timeline. And as the video plays, you kind of talk to the video. You, you create a story, you explain, you make it cinematic, and then you play around with the effects after. And <laughs> it's going to be hilarious once you try out the different effects, echo, low pass, high pass, all those awesome things that you can like play with inside of LumaFusion. It's really, really, try it out. VoiceOver in LumaFusion is really something that you need to test, definitely worth the experience. And if you have the courage to send me your voiceover, I really want to check out the voiceover that you make during this uh, time as well. Now with that said, the next thing that is uh, really something that you can practice on and do during this time is to talk to a camera. You can practice on talking to a camera. You can practice on talking to a camera. You can start practicing by talking to yourself in the mirror if you don't want to hassle with the setting of the camera and if you don't have the gear to kind of see yourself like I'm doing up here and if that is something that you really really want as well. I have something coming very soon which I have been using for quite some time now which is 95% uh, cheaper than the uh, uh, monitor which I have here which I also talked about the uh, port keys P6 and I have something which is 95% cheaper which actually does the same thing, which is coming soon. But that is something that you can spend your time on during this uh, period as well. Just practice talking to a camera because most of us really want to get out there. We kind of, maybe we want to start a vlog and maybe we want to just make your tutorials. Maybe we want to just talk to a camera for those that just want to talk to a camera. The bloopers, all the bloopers, all the bloopers, <clears throat> all the bloopers, all the bloopers, <laughs> All the bloopers here on the channel, <laughs> all the bloopers here on the channel would probably extend this video to, I don't know, maybe an hour because my native language is not English. So it's always a struggle to find the correct words to use. And 
yeah, you know, we're gonna stop it there and move over to the next thing. So thing number seven, and that is, while we're inside, you know, what can we do? And what do we do on a daily basis? Well, we make food, we cook, we drink coffee. So what about making a cinematic short cooking sequence. If you're alone, it's a little bit harder because you have to set up the camera in different angles. Let's say for example, you are just just to give an give you an example of how you can do this. So let's say that you are filming uh, your cooking and you're cooking pasta and you're making pasta and you have it in a pan and you want to put some sauce in there and so on. So let's start by having the camera further away so we get like the entry shot and then you film while you take the spoon down to the pan and you stop when you hit the pan and you move the camera closer, you zoom in and you do the same movement and there you have two shots. So then you have the wide angle, which you are making a raw cut to once you hit the uh, pan with the spoon. And then you have the next shot after, which is continuing the move of the spoon going down into the pasta. So there's two shots, which can help you on the way as well. But making a cooking cinematic b-roll or cinematic sequence during this time will really make you step up the game and practice. Now let's move over to number eight and that is to do a cinematic remake in Luma Fusion. And by a cinematic remake, I mean that you take all the usable footage that you have on any of your devices. You import that over to Luma Fusion. You make a separate folder in the files folder. You put all the footage in there and you connect that to Luma Fusion boom, and you have it all organized. And uh, on top of that, you take some Epidemic Sound Awesome music and you take some story blocks, one month subscription maybe, and you also take some of the free presets from my channel or the paid ones, depending on what you want to have. And uh, you also take some uh, from the tutorials as well. And uh, you start creating a better cinematic video than you than you ever created before. And this will really, really keep you busy because you want to start on that. If you're like me, you're gonna have your mind on that project until it's finished. Then you're gonna be so busy that suddenly this uh, virus mm, is over and uh, you're on the next plane to explore the world. So that is <laughs> something that I'm gonna be busy on doing as well, yeah. Mm. Now moving mm. over to number nine, and number nine is really, really time consuming. There is other apps out there which can make it easier to do this, and this is stop motion. I'm not a huge fan of third party apps when I edit in LumaFusion, and most of you know that. The only thing I use basically 900% of the time is Affinity Photo and LumaFusion. That's it. I wanna waste my time or spend my time, not waste, but I wanna spend my time in LumaFusion and Affinity Photo and for thumbnails Lightroom. Making stop motion in LumaFusion is really, really easy, insanely easy, because you take the photos, let's say we take the photos with the a7 III here, and you take one photo, you move the uh, object, you take one more, move it, one more, move it, one more, move it, one, and, and so on. And uh, once you're done, you take all the photos, put in a files folder, map folder, inside files folder, <laughs> again, to keep it organized. And then you select all those after, of course, you connected that folder to LumaFusion, you select all the photos. But first, here's the trick. But first you go over to the settings inside of LumaFusion and you select the photo duration to 0 0.03 or 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.03 I think it is, yes. And once you've done that, you select all the clips, drag it over to timeline and then you render. And once the render is complete, you have your stop motion. Voila, I also have a video on this. If you're interested in seeing how I made stop motion, you can check it out in the description below as well. So now let's move over to the final thing to do while you are locked up in your home and you can't really do anything about it. So number 10 is practice camera movements. And that might sound pretty, pretty weird. Here's the thing. Once you practice your camera movements inside, it's really hard to find something of an inspiration or something which is looking good if you're not like living out of a catalog. But if you have a normal home just like me, it's really hard 
to find something in your home and make that look epic. By epic, I mean epic B-roll. It's really hard to do that because it's all about the camera movement, it's about the lighting and all of that. So by practicing that, every single day now for just 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 an hour even or 30 minutes and put that footage into luma fusion let's say you do this for a week whatever you want to film in your house outside your house just just your house in general you do that for one hour every single day for a week you will see improvement in the way that you handle the camera and the movement that you get out of your camera and once you take all the footage from week one or day one to day seven and you take all of that and import into LumaFusion then try to see if you can make a cinematic b-roll out of those clips that you gather over those seven days. This will definitely keep you busy and you will have a blast doing that as well. 100% Rob HK guaranteed that you will have a blast doing that. So with that said, that's the end of this video and I really hope that you enjoyed my 10 things of what you can do while you're locked up in your apartment house, wherever you're locked up. Hopefully you're not in jail, but it feels like you're in jail because it's madness. It's madness. So... Um, as well, subscribe would be really appreciated if you did that. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.